Hello, my name is Dr. Anthony Kleinsmith. I am the founder and president of the company that brings you the very best colostrum in the world today. Now, long before I became the producer of colostrum and touting the health benefits that humans get from it, uh, I was a farm boy. I grew up in a family-owned farm in Cache Valley, Utah. And one of the best teachers that I ever had that I worked side by side with was my father. Now, he always taught me that first milk, the substance that he was calling first milk, was an absolute important thing to give to a, a newborn. And what we would do is we would gather it up, put it in bottles very much like this, and hand feed it to the calves. And they would suck on it like there was no tomorrow. Now, sometimes these calves would not get their first milk. And what he was teaching me was that those calves that didn't get it would also become sickly and they would not be producers later on in life. And one of the, one of the things that I got from my education from my father was that first milk was absolutely important to the health of the newborn, but it could also be absolutely important to the health as we grow older. When Dr. Kleinsmith and others with a dairy background talk about first milk, they're speaking of colostrum, a natural secretion produced by the mammary glands. This substance is intended for newborns in the first few hours of life, but research has shown that colostrum has important benefits for humans, too. In most mammals, including humans, many of the important substances contained in colostrum cross the placenta and reach the fetus prior to birth. Thus, they derive plenty of benefits early on. In cows, however, most of the essential substances do not reach the calf prior to birth. Instead, they're diverted to the udder and are delivered to the calf by way of the udder in the first few hours of life. And this brings us to an absolute scientific fact about colostrum. Uh, the timing in which you take this substance is absolutely probably the number one factor in getting true colostrum. Now we won't get into a lot of science about colostrum and colostrogenesis and the production thereof. You can see that the composition changes very rapidly after six hours. The FDA in the 1950s gave us a definition of colostrum that drew it out to up to six milkings, which included up to 48 hours. Today's scientific community and the research from UC Davis, Cornell, um, Washington State, all show that the very first milking shortly after birth is true colostrum and the constituents are all there. After that time frame, the, the beneficial factors that are, that are found in true colostrum drop off very rapidly. This may not sound like a big difference, but it is. And it demonstrates the clear difference between Anthony Kleinsmith's colostrum and other products on the market that are based on udder secretions taken as long as 48 hours after birth. Dr. Donald Lyon is Professor Emeritus of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Cornell University. One of the most important things with bovine colostrum is that its production uh, takes place, of course, in those last three weeks of pregnancy and really uh, is highly fortified in the last few hours before birth. After the birth of the calf, within the next six hours, uh, we have a situation where milk is being produced and this begins to dilute the colostrum that's present. The suckling uh, of the calf or even manipulating the cow's udder to take uh, that first colostrum will increase milk production so will dilute colostrum further and if colostrum was just left, the cow wasn't touched, calf didn't suckle, Within a, uh, six hours and on up to 12 hours and beyond, we'll get reabsorption of colostrum back into the cow system. Many of the uh, great things that are present there uh, that are needed for protection of that calf and uh, protection really of uh, any offspring or person is lost at that time. And we obtain colostrum only from the first milking and under extremely stringent conditions. It's important to know this. Collection of colostrum from cows soon after birth does not harm the cow or the newborn calf. Simply put, cows produce more colostrum than a calf needs. The best quality colostrum is collected only from cows that are maintained under controlled conditions. Now I'm holding with me the kind of the Bible of the dairy industry. 
the numbers were published in 1978, and they really haven't changed. Uh, we look at processing according to what the book says. Now, when we process, what we're doing is we're removing bacteria as well as 98% or thereabouts of the moisture, leaving us with a very condensed version of powder with all of the biologically active substances intact. Now, as you can see from the chart, there is a very drastic difference between the ideal colostrum powder and my competitors. But if you take a look at what, the, what I produce as far as the powder, and you take a look at what the fundamentals of dairy chemistry say, we're very, very close. We've learned a lot about colostrum and the differences between true colostrum and other products. Now, let's turn to our experts. Joining Dr. Kleinsmith now is Dr. Alfred Fox, immunologist and an expert in the formation of colostrum and its application in humans and animals. Dr. Donald Lyon kind of laid out what true colostrum really is. He's sort of the expert nationwide, possibly even worldwide, on colostrum. I'm um, speaking with Dr. Alfred Fox about why, as a human being, why we want to take a colostrum from bovine, from these ladies all around us. Um, Dr. Fox, why, why, why do we take it? First, we have to realize that as we get older, the systems in our body um, lose their ability to function. It's just natural because we're not producing the hormones in a sufficient quantities to keep them regulated. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things that happens in your body uh, in, is in terms of your ability to respond to, say, a bacterial or a fungal infection or a viral infection uh, has to do with uh, your thymus gland. Your thymus gland is a little gland the, uh, over the, your breastbone that uh, was the seat of your immune system uh, when you were very young. By the time you were 13 years old, that thymus gland had developed your immune system to its maximum. And then over time, that thymus gland shrinks and diminishes in size, and by the time you're 50 or 60 years old, it is a little piece of rudimentary connective tissue. So basically, if we have the ability to put substances back in your body that'll keep these things regulated and healthy and at normal levels, why wouldn't we do that? Uh, that increases your longevity and the quality of your life. 